Hello, hello everyone. It's Tanya with Scribbles and Time. I'm going to do a flip through this morning um, of my latest journal. And it is morning here. I'm not sure what time of the day you might be watching this or, or anything, but here it is very early morning. I probably have a sleepy voice. Um, I get up very early and I'm trying to film this video early because it is summertime and everyone in my neighborhood tries to get out and do their walking real early. So it gets my dogs to barking and the squirrels get out and get to play in. And I'm trying to do this while it's still a little bit dark outside so that maybe we won't have any interruptions with my doggies barking. But um, it also creates poor lighting. So I apologize for that. I have obviously my overhead light on and then I also have a lamp set up um, to try to get the most lighting that I can, but it might be creating some weird shadows, so I apologize, but it's the best I can do right now. Um, so, the journal, I feel like, <laughs> I'm going to call this one the flower, um, because there is a flower brooch on the front. Um, I feel like, I mean, like, I went back and forth. I wanted to call this journal Letting Go because I am doing my best to go through and let go of, of things that I collect. Um, everything from brooches to just um, my vials. I, my, I showed y'all my bowl of watches. I just have, um, I, I love collecting unique items. Not that they're unique. I'm not saying that no one else has them. I'm just saying for me, they're unique items and um, what I consider kind of different, unusual items. But I am trying to let go. So maybe I should just call my whole journals of this nature a letting go series <laughs> and call this one the flower. Um, I do have one other brooch. I think just one other brooch with a flower. Um there might be two, but but the one I'm remembering, it's a very small, it's more like a pen. And I don't know that I'll ever be able to incorporate it onto the front of a journal. So this might be the only journal that has a flower on the front. Um, so maybe I won't struggle with having to come up with a different name if I ever have another flower. But um, anyway, that was a lot to say about the title, huh? I'm going with the flower on this one. Um, the outside... I'll kind of rotate so that you can see all the angles and then we'll measure. Um, this one has a little bit of a gator mouth. To me, the, the underlying format of this book is a little bit smaller than some of my other ones. So it just has more of a compact feel about it. It, it feels good in the palm of your hand. Uh, I did the layering on the spine. I did, so I was trying to do them all cattywonker. I wanted to put like I, I literally wanted to put them upside down and everything, but it ended up looking kind of odd. This one, you can't see the writing real well. So I put it upside down because I wanted that look of it all being hodgepodge. I, I started doing this one and it, it was too much. So this is how the spine turned out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> trying to get my words right here. So yeah, it's all cattywonker and uh, layered and messy stitched around it and um and whatnot here's the back of the book um, i'll talk about what these books are in just a moment now this i'll get to this in a little bit but this is tucked into the back and it can be pulled over like that um if someone wanted to and actually attached i didn't do it and i'll explain why in just a little bit but but it could be um but I didn't do that, and I'll show you why in a moment. Anyway, so let's let's measure before I forget. Um, if you measure from the hard area of the book, like the top of the spine, just to the bottom of the spine, we're at about eight inches. But if we're going to measure all the pokey out stuff, the, the fringes and all that stuff, then we're going to have to bring it up here, and we're closer to 10 inches. The um, side measurement onto the hard part of the book, we're at hmm, about, six and, about six and a half. And then if we're going all the way out to the edge of the fringe, we're closer to eight and three quarters or maybe even nine, if that's out right, something like that. Um, the thickness of the book, again, it's got a little bit of a gator mouth. 
if we measure the thickness, we're going to be at somewhere around three and three quarters, maybe three and a half, somewhere around those lines. I like to give that, even though my books really aren't made to go into a bookcase, um, I think it's important for you to know how thick it is, just depending on where you want to set it. I try to do mine to where they are pretty sitting out on a table on a nightstand or a coffee table, um, just as a conversation piece. And um, the, well, before I tell you about the book covers, let me show you real quick. So hanging out of one of the signatures, if I don't show this now on the outside of the book, I'll forget about it when I'm flipping through the inside. So I want to go ahead and show that. But hanging out of the center of the book, the center signature, there's three signatures. So hanging out of the center one, this is a um, glass chandelier, um, chandelier bead. It's like, I hesitate to say crystal because I'm not good at knowing what's authentic and what's not authentic and all of that kind of stuff. I know that I have a small bowl of these. <laughs> I probably have maybe um, 10 left. I have them in a real pretty, I don't have it sitting at my desk right now, but it's a real pretty glass um, uh, with a hinge lid and these are all sitting in it. And it's got like the, I didn't even want to take the metal I'm so weird about stuff because I didn't want to take the, this is old rusty metal that connected them all together at one point in its life. And I didn't even want to take that out. So that's still hanging from that. And um, then this is, I mentioned in my last video, I found these, uh, I think, I think they're fishing lures. I put a little pearl bead, sea bead on the top and bottom, but it's just like a very light wood, almost like a cork feel, but it's, not cork, I'm sure. I don't know what it is. Um, I found those in my father-in-law's old workshop after he passed away. And I'm trying to use those. I'm trying to use my stuff, guys. <laughs> How many times am I going to say that in this video? Okay, back to the front. So on the front, I, I did it a little bit differently. Normally I do a writing journal here on the front of the book, on the inside of the cover. Um, I'll show you what this is in just a moment. It's not a writing journal. Um, I did, so usually that's a book cover, which in this case, it technically is not a book cover. I'll show you in a moment, but this black, um, book cover here is the same book cover from the back of the book at, in the front. Um, that was from a book called, um, The Black Curtain, and it was published in 1941. I tried to do my research on my stuff so that I can give you as much information about, the items as possible um so yeah that's the black book the red book i thought when i was looking all i had was the front and back cover the spine was missing even though i was able to match that up perfectly as far as color don't even know how that happened it was just meant to be i guess um that is not the spine that goes to this book the spine was gone um, all i had was the front cover and it was disconnected from the back cover um, and all of this was hanging off the edges, and so I tried to incorporate as every little piece that I could salvage. I tried to put it into this book, so you'll see little pieces of. Can you see that? You'll see little pieces of this um, book cloth, this book spine from the original book here, and um, so this book it said O. Henry on it. So when I researched that again, I would have thought you know, 1800s, because it was not well kept. You can see the edges, but y'all know I love when something shows its age. And I mean, this is still, um, what I found was an O. Henry series that was from 1915 to 1918, and it was different storylines. And um, so that's, it's, it's not as old as what I would have thought. It's still about a hundred and about 105 years old which is still very old it just I don't know sometimes I find books from the 1900s that that just look you know um almost new <laughs> they were so taken care of this one was well loved I suppose because it was really worn down um didn't have the pages all I had was the book covers the black book I told you it was a book um called the black curtain when I was researching it it was pretty cool it, it Apparently, is a story about a man who wakes up with amnesia, and anyway, just it 
looked like a cool novel. Um, and again, 1940, 1941, I think. Uh, layered it with the pieces of book spine, like I had said. The, um, this is kind of already showing y'all that. I did put some little um, muslin on the corners to help protect the corners. They're very hard with the, with the adhesive. Oops. There we go. And then um, there's some cardboard. There's cheesecloth. This is, if I had to guess, I'd probably say the 80s, maybe 90s. I, I would call this vintage. It, it was a silver plated photo frame that my friend Dee gave to me. And it was already pretty aged up, but I did want to put a little gold in with it um, to pop out the gold from the brooch there on the front. And so I tried to kind of age it up and grungy it up even more. And then I sealed it with a clear coat over the top so that it wouldn't rub off. And so there's kind of an up close picture of that. And then um, this is one of the old sewing vials that I have. Um, it's a little glass vial. It had sewing machine parts in it, as you can see. And they're not they're not like what I would call cool parts. They're so, let's see if I can show you one. They're so tiny, you can't even hardly see them. It's like the little pins out of a watch. Um, so you, you can't even really see them when they're in the vial. So I took those out. They almost look like little pieces of pencil lead. I took those out. There was like two in there and um, put some little pearl sea beads and I can't remember if that's a piece of paper. I think it's a piece of the book spine that I put in there. That's the original label that was on the bottle. Um, this is one of the old brass industrial um, tags. Sorry about the lighting. Let's see if I can hold that better. Um, and then this is a fabric like clothing tag. And of course the corner protectors, the lace on the bottom. If you flip the lace up, you can see the under part of that book. And then this is a piece of lace that's on the first page of the book that I'll be showing you in just a moment. But when the book's closed, you can see the, the layering effect that that offers. And I think that's everything from the outside. So let's go ahead and open. Oh, and then the little wine tab there. Anyway, let's open it up so I can kind of show you what I did here on the inside. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know that typically when I open my book up, there is a journal or a book here. And um, so I'm doing, again, I'm trying to use things that that I don't want to get rid of, but but I'm going to. And so I attached a um, book in here. I made just a little pocket with some upholstery fabric and just put some of the old um, gauze around it. And the friend just poking out there on the side so it shows from the front. And um, the, the book, I don't know how it is. Re Ricordo di Venezia, 32 Verdue. <laughs> they do. <laughs> how awesome. <laughs> how awesome was that? Um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm sure that means 32 photos. And um, it is just so amazing. Here's what the back looks like. Let me hold it down and the front and this is not hard this is um, like cardboard um, it's thin and the only there's not a copyright in here the only thing I could find says Thursday November 24th and I did look up um, 1932 November the 24th fell on a Thursday so I'm assuming the copyright of this must be 1930s um, or at least that's when the person wrote that in there and um, otherwise there's no copyright in here now the way this is this is like one of the touristy um, photo things so it, it folds out I don't even know how this has to fold out probably five feet six feet maybe I don't know this is really long um, so I can't get it all in camera the backs of all of these, um, that's the part of that there. That is like the overview of the entire, but the individual photos are at the end. And the backs of those have the writing on the back that I guess describes 
what they are. I don't know that I did a very good representation of this. <laughs> oh, I love it though. It's so pretty. It's just so pretty. It makes me uh, sit and daydream. So yeah, when you flip through, you see all the amazing photos. Look at that cathedral. So um, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing a, a fast video and I can never do that. <laughs> I talk too much. I'm sorry. Um, so at the end on the inside of the there's the whole map. Yes. Okay. So that slides back into here like this. I kind of hold that little tab like that and slide it in so that just the edge is poking out so that you can see that from the front of the book. So that's the way I did the inside cover of this journal. The first page, I uh, attached these little hard cases and um, put a pencil in one. Guys, my um, oh, when I was cleaning out for my craft room, I found this old school pencil sharpener that I have. And I've got to get my husband to hang it on the wall. I'm so excited because I've always just used one of the electro electric, you know, pencil sharpeners. And to me, you don't get an even sharp sharpening of a pencil. It, it's always kind of an even. So I'm excited to use my old school one and see how that goes. Over here is a paintbrush. Oh, my bristles are hanging up. A uh, paintbrush. And it is new, but I did vintage. I tried to make it look older, but I wanted obviously to provide a new paintbrush in case anyone wants to paint inside the journal. So since I didn't do a writing area over here, I incorporated some notebook paper over here, but it's very grungy. A person could write on it or they could write on a separate piece of paper and attach it to the grungy notebook paper. There's like, um, I didn't do a lot of the notebook paper. There's like 12 surfaces of notebook paper that you can attach, um, you know, journaling to or pictures or whatnot. Um, so I'll show you that in just a moment, but I did put the pencil on there in case you wanted to do some writing. And then the paintbrush is for all the other pages, which I use the mixed media paper so that it can be um, gessoed and, and painted on. Um, but anyway, so this is mixed media paper and there is like a um, embroidered flower that I've attached there over the top of some collaging. And you can see that there's like gesso with I've just really grungied the paper up. Um, here, I've used fabric and paper and um, old napkin. I've just used all kind of old stuff here with this old piece of lace hanging out the bottom. And then this is actually a little um, pocket, but I wanted to do it to where it didn't necessarily look like a pocket in case you know, whoever gets the book doesn't actually want to paint, but and just, but anyway, it is a pocket, but my thought process of how I, of why I did that was because I put throughout the book little pieces of the mixed media paper in here that can be painted on, and then like, as you paint, that's the rest off of the clip, it's just a little bulldog clip, but as you paint, you can tuck these into this little pocket, like so. So, and I actually painted it, uh, here, I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and flip through. So, yeah, you can tuck through, you know, if you did some paintings, you can just tuck them all in here or even notes or photographs or whatever. But I really wanted to think of this as an art journal. So that was my thought process. I don't know how many there are. I think there's, um, let's say, three, six, seven, maybe eight little pieces here. It's just mixed media paper. You can always add add more. But there's that. And I just kind of tuck that in the side of this. We'll get to this in a minute. But I will show you what I'm talking about with these little pieces of paper. I love doing that because in my own journals. Because um, like here's where I did a little small one just to represent what I'm talking about. Um, if you and this is more of the paper and it's perforated so that you can actually tear it out. And um, you can paint little small paintings like that. And um, 
and it's not anything fancy, but you can paint little small paintings and then you can tear those out and use them on the edges of your paper like taps, like, like, or even just inside the paper and then write on it, you know, right over to the side. So anyway, that's my thought process of this little pocket here was that there's all kind of little pieces of, of painting paper that you can paint on for there. There's the little cases that, and then we'll flip on over to the next page. The next page is um, just a little piece of the collaged mixed media paper. And I did a little piece of cloth here to help secure this spot because of this hard case. You know, I didn't want it to ever compromise this paper right there. So I put the piece of cloth there to help secure that. And this is a dolly, an old dolly. And this is a piece of that grungy notebook paper that I was talking about. But you definitely can write on it, but there are areas that's so dark and grungy, it would be hard to see writing. So yeah, you could also like write on a, another piece of paper and then just attach it. Does that make sense? Okay, that's my thought process. So I kind of already showed you this a little bit. So this page here is the mixed media paper and I've done a little cluster tab over to the side just with some, um, that's a wood chip that says most of the word beautiful on it. It's a little bit cut off, I think. But it's layered with all kind of paper and fabric and um, cardboard. This is a butterfly that's kind of dimensional. And then um, this is a cigar band um, off of a cigar box. This is one of the things I struggle with letting go of. I've been trying to use them in my last several journals. Um, I think I'm down to, I don't know, maybe 10 more um, of these. So it's a cigar box label. And I did a little hard piece of um, muslin or, or gauze up here so that that can be kind of used as a tab to slide under there like that to tuck that and hold that into place because it's just attached to a thin piece of old fabric and there's a little bit of weight on it because of the paper and everything and I've done a cluster of buttons on the bottom and then the one button on the top so I did the little hard tab to use as a little tuck thing to help tuck it and then when you flip this page um, there's just the piece of fabric coming down the center and over here is the clothing tags. I've been using these two, but making myself use them. I really struggle with it because these are probably, oh, I just love them. They're, um, they're clothing tags that say Master Buck. I don't know how old they are, but they're just, they're cool to me. It's the odd things like that that I love. I don't, I don't, can't put it into words, but I do. This is the other side of that old piece of material. Um, this has some little flowers kind of embroidered on. And then notebook paper. The other side of the dolly. This is the mitts media paper, again with collaging. Now in between the signatures, I usually like to leave that showing. Um, because I try to always use really cool material um, coming down so that peeks through. But I did put material here, because, and the reason why is because these hard cases right here, it wants to pull on this signature. So I didn't like that it had that, you know, that, that look of being fatter right there than this one is. And it was very noticeable when the spine is showing so I put the fabric there and I do try to always leave spacing between my signatures so that, um, you know, if you wanted to slide a, a, you know, a little thin paintbrush or a pencil in there, you can, you can tuck something in there um, if you wanted to. So there's a space there for that. This signature just starts off with the gessoing and collaging and the grungy paper. Oh, I love this. So you'll see in a minute, I tried to tie some blues in. I'll show you in a minute, but this is, I just thought, I love it. I don't have much of that left. Um, 
anyway it's just this old this old um, it reminds me of like an old dishcloth um, material it's that you know that woven look notebook paper a little bit of fabric in between here to help secure it um, this is some fabric coming down the center here again to help secure it because the weight of the bag is is heavy and I wanted that to be secure and then the bag, I did like a little brad with a number on it and a little eyelet up here and then a wooden key die um, on that. And on the other side, I also did the number brad on the other side with another eyelet down here on the bottom. So that's the way the bag is. And the bag is kind of sandwiched. I've already shown you the art paper on the one side of the bag. On the other side of the bag, I have... A bag inside of a bag <laughs> so yeah I've tucked the bag down inside of this bag and then I've put just I guess things I like is it, they don't make a lot of there there's not a, a rhyme or reason to them it's just things I like um there's one of the watches is missing the glass over the top um I've just wrapped it up with some fabric shove that down in there and there's a coin And then a little doggy figurine. This tiny little dog figurine. And obviously this adds a fair amount of bulk to the journal. So it could be taken out. It doesn't have to be in there. I like it to be bulky. So I put it in there. I even like this little piece of rope sticking out a little bit like that. I just like stuff to give personality to a book. I want it to be something that... People that, you know, sit down in your home and if this is sitting on the coffee table or on the side table, they want to investigate and see what's all in here. And I don't want it to be boring. I want it to have, you know, neat stuff in here. So on the back side here, under this brad, I put all kind of fabric and paper. Again, this is a little strip of the uh, mixed media paper that could be painted on and attached to the edge of a page. Um, you know, it's just kind of up to whoever's preference. I don't know if I mentioned, I think I said it, but I don't remember if I said it, but on these pages here, they're perforated. I think I said that already, but they can be torn off. I didn't perforate this one because I probably would almost either write on this or paint a little picture on it and leave it if it were mine. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Down here on the eyelet, I just tied on an old piece of um, crocheted uh, material down here. Can you see that? Um, the shadows are just so bad. I'm so sorry. I wonder if it would be better with the lamp off. Um, probably it would be too dark. Okay, so anyway, I've tied that on just in a bow so it can be untied and this can be put on a, a tab or put inside the bag or whatever but I just kind of liked it like that again it's just a little bit of personality on the page over here um, on this page this is where this uh, the, the center pieces hang out um, that I was afraid I would forget to mention <laughs> but here I am remembering it a little bit of fabric up here um, the tab here I've just um, put two little eyelets in it and tied some ribbon around and this is some really old, let me see if I can reach it. So I have a bolt of this old trim. And so I just made a little tab right there out of that. Again, put the eyelets in. And on the other side, I've hung a little charm of the bird with the bird nest and the little um, faux pearl eggs. thought that was pretty. Some fabric coming down the center. And it's hard to it's hard to tell on camera, but like this fabric really draws your eye back over to this fringe and over here to this little touch of red because it has those colors in it. I like to try to, as I work through a journal, I like to try to do that to where your eye is constantly getting drawn over to the different different little spots. You can even see this little piece of this poking out the top in person. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but. That's my thought process. As I sit and add the fabrics down here, I'm looking constantly to see what I want to pop out and pull out. So that's that. Um, 
here's the other side of that blue stripe. A little bit of fabric up here. Fabric coming down the center. This is some beautiful um, trim that I have. Let me see if I can reach it. This is how much I have left of that. Um, anyway, it's just very pretty. Coming down the side of that page and it pokes out like that. Gives dimension there. And this is an old piece of material as well. Ooh, the lighting, sorry. I almost don't even like to look through the camera because I hate to see how bad this lighting is. Okay, this is an old piece of wallpaper. Um, it's got a deer on it and trees and mountains in the background. Just very pretty. I'll put some material coming down here. Again, it's that same material that pulls these colors out. And then this is collaging, a little bit of washi tape up here, gesso. There's some um, galls coming down the center there. More art paper. And then here is where I tried to pull out the blues. Let's see if we can make this show up on camera. Again, there's, there's blues from this angle. Um, so I tried to pull, you see the blue there and the blue there. So I just tried to pull out the blues on this angle of it and then this is just some sheer fabric my dogs are getting riled up so I'm fixing to have to really really speed this up some sheer material with some beautiful rose trim coming down and again I did the yellow on that to help pop this color here because we're right here at this cigar label that's here this is the back of this um, wallpaper again you can see the mountains on the top and the trees mountains the other side of that old material real paper thin and then this is a cigar box label and I did back it with some paper to because when you're holding the journal this tends to want to bend in which I love but I didn't want it to bend too much so I attached some and backed it to some paper to help with that so you can see how I've kind of wrapped the cigar band around the page and the actual art paper stops right here and then this has like writing on it I don't know if you can see it and then this was the part I was telling you about earlier when I was showing you the back of the book that this could actually be attached here was my thought process on this so I was um, going to make a I call them book boards um, it's the, you know, the boards that you slide in behind a piece of paper so that you can press against it and write. And um, I've, I've made those for many of my journals, but for some reason I, I made, I made one. I really loved it. I'll use it in another journal down the road, um, but it just, it didn't feel authentic. So much of this journal has just authentic um, old pieces. So I wanted whatever I, you know, tucked into the back of this one to be authentic. And the handmade board just did not feel authentic. Even though I collaged it with really pretty old papers and stuff, it didn't feel authentic. So I, I wanted, you know, that feel on this journal. So I don't even know now if I would actually use this as a press board because I actually used a very old photo. It, it can be used as a press board. It, it you know, it, it it's hard and it can be used. And I created a pocket for the old photo to help protect it because it's so fragile um, around the edges. So I just used, you know, a coordinating green file folder and created a little pocket to slide it into like that. And that's where I attached the old crocheted trim to it. Um, but anyway, the um, photo itself... <laughs> Oh, I don't even want to look at it. I love it so much. Um, so yeah, it's you can see it's embossed here. And uh, very fragile, very thin. Again, the reason I made the little folder for it. But it is just a beautiful picture of a little baby. And then she pretty. You can see the um, um, cabinet card there beautiful little baby 
on the back you can see that um, it's labeled um, Margot Elizabeth O'Connor can you see Margot Elizabeth O'Connor age six weeks and it's dated February the 16th 1913 and um yeah, not a lot more I can say about that. It's, it speaks for itself. It's just very pretty. Anyway, um, fabric here. This is the original you know, back of the book cover. I didn't add any kind of back page to that. And I just tucked that in there, just like that. And let this kind of poke out the side so that when the book is closed, it pokes out. Even if you took this out, it's still pretty from the side. Um, and that is it. I believe I've shown every aspect of the journal. Um, if you have any questions, please list it below. A lot of times when I'm looking, I'm, I'm on my TV and I can't type from, obviously, when I'm watching from my TV. So I see the comments and I always respond to the comments as quickly as I can. But sometimes when I see them, I'm not on my phone. Um, but as soon as I get to my phone or to a computer, I, I comment back and, and respond. So um, if I see that someone asks a question, I will definitely try to get straight over to a computer and respond. Um, otherwise, I do respond to all the comments. It might just take a day or two, just depending on where I'm at and how quickly I can get to a computer. Um, but anyway, I really appreciate when you comment, so I would love to hear feedback and comments. Um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, please. And um, thanks so much for watching this. Thanks for, for your time and, um, and listening to me <laughs> ramble. I really appreciate you very much. Love you all. Y'all have a blessed day.